Just a quick reminder guys, these narrations are best enjoyed with headphones on. Ooh, what is everyone's spot to come under 1992 Federal Earth Disabled Game of Reviews here. For Easter, we're heading to the small snowy town of South Park, North Colorado to take a look at one of the successors of the Stick of Truth. Is this game worthy of remembrance like its predecessor? Or is this game just as bad as South Park 64? Well, without further ado, let's find out. Comedy Central South Park is one of the most recognizable adult cartoon TV series to date. The first episode of this franchise was aired on August the 13th, 1997. Since then, the franchise is one of the most recognizable icons in American TVs to date. The franchise only made it to the big screen with South Park Bigger, Longer and Uncut, released in cinemas in 1999. Of course, with all the highly popular TV series, Video game spin-offs were inevitable. Some of them were most of the notable titles of the South Park would be The Stick of Truth, The Fractured Butthole, and this title, released just last week. The story set after The Stick of Truth and in the fictional town of South Park, North Colorado. An intense blizzard is rocking the town, so all the schools in the South Park area had to be closed due to a snow day. And of course, Carmen decided to take full advantage of the unexpected day off by telling everyone to go out inside and play. Of course, everyone decided to continue with a medieval fantasy game which started during the event of the Stick of Truth. The war between humans and drow elves is still ongoing. The drow elves, led by Karl Barbowski, is preparing to launch a massive attack on the kingdom of Koopa Keep. It is up to you to fight your way to the various levels and discover the truth about the mysterious weather phenomena that is currently rocking the town. The Axis ability scores are as follows. Starting off strong, visibility gave it 10. There are colorblind modes that can be changed in the Axis ability sections of the options menu. In levels, teammates are represented by numbers. These numbers will appear above your teammates' heads, so you will know and where your that particular teammate is. So a player with a visual impairment will be able to play this game with very minimal issues. Continuing on with that form of momentum, audibility 11. There are subtitles that can be enabled and disabled via the options menu. Better still, you can customize whichever font size of the subtitles you want. This allows a player with a visual impairment to read the subtitles without the risk of getting any eye strain while reading them. So a player with a hearing impairment should be able to play this game with no issues whatsoever. For this form of momentum to come to a grinding halt, mobility, I give it 8. In the PC version, which we used to test it, the keyboard and mouse controls can be fully customized to suit the player's impairment. However, when using a gamepad, these controls are very hard to use. There is no legacy stick layout available in this game, which can render the console version completely inaccessible for a player with a mobility impairment. So a player with a mobility impairment will find it hard to play the console version, but the PC version is very playable. Last but certainly by no means least, gameplay I gave a 9. This game suffers from the exact same problem that Turtle Rock Studios' as shooter Back for Blood suffered. This game is way too reliant on cooperative play. When you're playing alone, the game feels a little lackluster, as your AI teammates will be able to help you progress, but it doesn't have the exact same experience when playing with other players or your friends online. The mechanics themselves take a leaf from the Warrior series. For the majority of the game, you will be constantly mashing the standard attack button as you fight your way through the levels. However, there are some RPG elements added to the mix which makes this game stand out. For example, you can enhance or change abilities while in Koopa Keep mixed in with a whole new mechanic which shakes this game a lot. And that is the Bull Card System. Before a campaign begins, you can select special cards with various effects. For example, making your opponent's weapons weaker, instantly resurrecting teammates and so forth, which can be put into play at any time. 
On the other hand, the, the enemy team can do the same, making the each campaign run truly unique. In summary, South Park Snow Day is a fairly good co-op hack and slash game. Its unique mechanics stand out, but it doesn't exactly fill these large shoes in which the stick of truth left. The game is somewhat short. The story is roughly the same length of Halo 3 ODST's campaign, but for its relatively cheap price on Steam, the length of the game is somewhat justified. You will be getting your money's worth with this game, so if you are looking for a bite sized action game to play over the summer or on a study break after while revising for exams, this game could be a good choice. And the overall score is a fairly respectable 95%. This is Vata Commander 1990 Chief Editor of Disabled Gaming Review signing off and I'll see you guys in the next review.